Hello everyone, it's Professor Fiore asking the big question, what's the deal with electrical ground? Electrical ground sometimes confuses people. Sometimes people think it's somehow magical, it's special in some weird sort of way. Well, it really isn't, okay? Ground is just a reference point. That's all it is. Okay, before we go any further, I need to say two things. Number one, I'm using Tina TI over here. Some simulators, not including Tina TI, require a ground to do a simulation. All right, here's your ground symbol. Tina TI doesn't, so don't let this throw you. If you have a simulator that requires a ground, that's fine. Don't worry about it. The second thing is there's more than one kind of ground. Right? There's earth ground and there's chassis ground, generally speaking. So we have right on earth this is the earth ground symbol over here which literally refers to earth terra firma the thing you're standing on there is also a chassis ground that's the symbol we typically use for a chassis ground in other words the case of something sometimes you'll see a a system common which is drawn like this little little triangle all right what are the differences he asked well think about it this way if you have a portable device cell phone right you don't have an earth ground how do you connect it back to earth why would you what would you do about uh, the electronics aboard an airplane the avionics package you're going to have a big Copper cable spooling out the back of the airplane as you're flying across the country? Don't think so. So what do we do in that case? All right. Well, earth ground is really a safety feature. So in North America, if you look at the uh, AC plug in your house, right, that round one, that one round one, you got the two dashed ones, you got the one round one, that's earth ground. And that's there for safety reasons. So you most likely are standing on earth or something connected to earth you don't want to touch something that's not at earth ground because then there's a potential difference and you get a shock all right so usually the chassis of something you know that's plugged into the wall is connected to earth ground all right devices anything you know your the chassis of your uh, home stereo right uh, you know, a lamp whatever the heck it is it's there for safety reasons ultimately that lead goes back outside and is connected to real live earth ground right real live dirt okay so normally it's actually connected to a cold water pipe right or you might have a large copper stake driven into the ground but either way you have a good earth connection so that's a safety sorts of thing but when it comes to portable devices that aren't connected to ground earth ground right we have this idea of a, of a chassis or a system common so it's really ultimately just a, um, a reference point that we compare other voltages to. Remember, voltage implies two points. It's not like current. Current's a rate of flow. So that's at a point, right? You can cut open a wire and say, well, the current at that point is so many amps. But a voltage, voltage is like a distance or a height. It implies two points. If you're going to talk about a distance or a height, you know, you're saying from this point to that point. It always implies two points. So we always talk about voltages across things, right? Voltage across resistor Rx, the voltage across resistor Ry, the voltage across the power supply, and so forth, right? Across, 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 across. Sometimes we use sort of sloppy language and we say the voltage at node A but there is an implied reference point and that implied reference point is ground so i'm going to walk you through this and show how this whole thing works so let's start with our little circuit over here all right so we've got a power supply and three resistors this is a simple series loop all right out of the power supply we are going to have a current flowing around here um, in a, in a uh, clockwise direction all right 
like so. Leaves the plus, goes through our x, plus to minus, right? Because that's a drop. So we're going from plus to minus, getting less. We go through our y, same deal, plus to minus. We go through our z, same deal again, plus to minus. Then we come back to the minus on the power supply, minus to plus, that's a rise. We know that the drops across these three from Kirchhoff's voltage law has to equal the rise, right? So to figure out what that circulating current is, I would have to equal the voltage source divided by the total resistance, right? All right, what's total resistance? Well, total resistance is just going to be the sum of Rx plus Ry plus Rz. All right, it's all series, no other connection. So that's 2 plus 3 plus 4, which is 9 ohms. And my power supply is 18 volts. So we'll divide that by 9 ohms, and we get 2 amps. So the drop across any given resistor, for example, the drop across Rx, we just use Ohm's law and say, well, it's the current times the resistance, I times Rx in this case. So that's 2 amps times 2 ohms, which is 4 volts. All right, so I know there should be 4 volts across Rx. 2 amps times 3 ohms is going to give us 6 volts for that. And then 2 amps times 4 ohms is going to give us 8 volts for Rz. All right? Okay, nothing magical there. Didn't even use the ground. The ground is over here, not connected to anything. Okay? Very often, this is what you would see in your in your DC book, right? The very first thing you, you look at, you know, they might have a 9-volt battery or something like that, a couple of resistors. You can do a calculation. No grounds to be seen. All right, let's do a, 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 an, an analysis, a DC analysis over here. See what we get. All right, so the meters are telling us, okay, 4 volts, that matches, 6 volts matches, 8 volts matches. So I can just click on one of these, like Rx. Current's flowing in the direction we expected, showing up at 2 amps. Our Y, current's still in the right direction, 2 amps. And our Z, same deal, right? All works. We are, as they say, clam happy. Okay, how happy are clams? Don't know. What if I connect the ground? So here's my ground, all right? Does anything change? Well, let's go up. And check. Well, there's four, six, and eight again. And I'll just grab one of these. Current's going down two amps. Hmm, hasn't changed. So what is the deal? Well, let's try moving it somewhere else. Maybe because I stuck it on the minus terminal. All right. Maybe that had an effect. So I'll bring it over here. Do the same thing. Uh, four, six, and eight. Okay, and again, current's going down, and it's two amps. Oh, so are we saying that, um, you know, the value, the, the location, excuse me, of the resistor makes no difference? Excuse me, of the, of the ground makes no difference on these voltages and so forth. Well, it makes no difference on the loop. In other words, the individual potentials on the resistors, the currents going through resistors, things like that, no, it doesn't make any difference. When it makes a difference is when we start talking about node voltages. So I'll, we're going to look at a slightly different version of this, right? Okay, so all I've done is I've added these points over here, VF1, VF2, VF3, and VF4. That's all I've done, okay? Matter of fact, let's clean this up a little bit. We'll get rid of our drawing. So these test points, right, these things have an implied second pin because a voltage, again, is two points from one point to another. What is the other point? You know, we say, hey, what's voltage VF2? Well, the other point, in other words, the black lead on a DMM would be ground. That's how we do it, All right? So let's rerun this. All right, so I'm getting the 6 volts, right, the 4 volts, the 8 volts across these components as expected. And we'll just do a real quick check over here, right? Current is in the direction expected. Nothing is 
looking a little weird there, but consider the potentials, right? So here's ground. You're going to rise 18 volts minus to plus. So VF1 is 18 volts above ground. Now we know the drop on our X is four volts. So we lose four from the 18 that should put us at 14, right? So VF2 is measured from here to here. So you start 18, you lose four, you're at 14. Of course, you could go this way too, right? You go this way, you're going to lose six, which would put you at eight. Then you lose eight, which puts you back to zero. So whether you go this way or this way, you're going to come up with the same potential, right? So here, you know, you're going to go down six, you're going to go down eight, that's 14. Here, you're actually going to go up uh, four, because remember, your drop is plus to minus this way. So going minus to plus is actually a rise. And then you go down 18, right? So you're still looking at a 14, uh, 14 volt change, right? So if you go from ground to here, you go up 18, you drop four, burp, you're at 14. You go this way, it's minus to plus eight, minus to plus six, right? Eight plus six, 14. Either way, however you want to do that. All right, now the fun bit. Let's go and move ground. I do not wish to imply that this other stuff is not fun, because certainly it is. Let's do that same analysis. Okay, so we still have the uh, six, uh, excuse me, yeah, the six volts, the four volts, and all these other good things, okay, on the resistors. Um, but these things like VF2 and VF3 and VF1, these are not the same. What's going on? Well, VF3 is zero because we tied that to ground. So the difference between VF3 and ground is nothing because VF3 is ground. But the negative side of the power supply is at minus eight. And the top side of the power supply is, 18, is not 18, it's 10. So this can confuse people, right? So but again, you know, just, just to be persnickety about it, look, there's the current it's going in this direction as expected, and it's still two amps. That hasn't changed. We've just changed where we're putting the black lead of the DMM. The reference point is different now. So if I'm starting here at zero, and we lose eight on our Z, losing eight from zero is minus eight volts. VF4 is at minus eight. Now we climb up, we rise 18 from minus eight, that puts us at plus 10. We lose four on our X, so four from 10 is six. There's a six volt drop on our Y, so six from six, and we're back to zero. All right, what I'm calling my reference point has changed. So finally, I can move this over to here. I'm gonna put this at the top of the power supply and see what happens. All right, again, the four, the 68, hasn't changed. All the potentials at the nodes, though, are negative except for VF1. Well, VF1 is zero because we tied it to ground. But now it's all drop, 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 all right? Lose four volts on RX, you're at zero. So you're not climbing anymore. You're going downstairs instead of up a ladder. So lose four, minus four. Lose six, lose six from minus four, you're at minus 10. Lose eight, right? and you're at minus 18. It's still 18 volts from the negative to the positive on E. It's still an 18 volt rise. You're going from negative 18 up to zero. That hasn't changed. All we're really doing is playing with our reference point. That's it. So ultimately that's what ground is. Ground is just the reference point. With DMM, that's where you're sticking the black lead. It's just that simple. So yes, I know we say things like the voltage at node one or node A or you know, node X, but that second point is always implied. In this case, it's going to be ground. All right. So you can't really talk about you know something like VF2 or, or VF3 if you don't have a ground. And I said at the outset that um, Tina will still simulate. You know, so what happens if you if you try to get something with this? Well, it's just going to assume where ground is, basically. And it might be where you want it to be, but it might not be. 
So bottom line, even though Tina will let you do this, hook in your ground. All right. So yeah, you got all these things. Where is my ground? Well, in this case, it's actually assuming it's right here. But it doesn't have to. It might assume it's somewhere else. Okay. Um, you know, I was talking at the outset about that those whole no number things with, um, you know, your your uh, usually ground in a in a simulator is going to be is going to be um, node zero. So this just sort of numbers things for you. There's so there's zero. So you know that's ground. That's what it's treating you as as ground. All right. But like I said, it might not. Be that way in a different circuit you know your ground might be over here um, if, if you have it connected it so be smart connect your ground even though it doesn't literally need it do it that way all of your node voltage are guaranteed to come out the way you expect them to be okay so ground is not magic it's just a reference point that's it but you need to know what your reference point is okay great questions put them in the comments Take care. We'll see you later.